Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and we're back with a Warhammer Vermintide 2 video. Vermintide 2 is moving on to its third season this June 23rd and with it comes a rather large update. So without further ado, let's begin. Season 3 for Warhammer Vermintide 2 drops on June 23rd for the PC version of the game. The update itself seems to be rather large and we're going to go over each of the specifics in greater detail. Firstly, it's being confirmed that the weather system is being implemented into the game. Where maps that are mostly based outdoors might have a chance of changing weather, so we may have a chance to see maps with rain, snow and fog. Honestly, because of the fact that it's such an immersive change, this is something that I'm actually quite excited about. While they still are the same usual maps that everyone is used to, a chance at a visual change every now and then does make it a bit more interesting. You won't be so bored watching the same things over and over. I'm hoping that the weather variations also affect your gameplay. Heavy rainfall, very thick fog, maybe even a snowstorm. This is something that can affect your field of view, thus making the game a little bit harder, but also giving you a reason to focus more. A bunch of cosmetics are coming in, both via shilling and premium, shilling being the in-game currency and obviously premium being, well, paid for content with real money. This is coming in two batches, the first batch on June 23rd and another one arriving around early July. I know a lot of people aren't fans of premium cosmetics, but we have to take into account that Vermintide 2 is quite large and does have a lot of content, and the developers themselves have said that they want to produce content for many years to come, so a premium shop does allow them to do so to be able to actually have the funds for it. And honestly, the way I see it is as long as they're also creating cosmetics that you can buy with in-game currency, it more or less balances it out. And lastly, it looks like we're getting a new career path for Marcus Kruber, the Grail Knight. So we're going to go over this fully and then offer some thoughts. The Grail Knight contains the new playable career complete with a new talent tree, new weapon types, new abilities, a whole new Bretonian Knight skin and more. The Grail Knight itself will be available on Steam and in Lorna's Emporium of Wonders. Okay cool, it's premium, that's understandable, it's a massive change, it's a new playstyle and so on. They further go into it when they start talking about the Grail Knight's lore itself. The Grail Knight is the pride of Bretonia, a blessed warrior granted supernatural might by the mysterious Lady of the Lake. As all Bretonian knights, he never engages in ranged combat, instead favouring foes with a gift of close quarters battle. Whether armed with his long sword or a trusty sword and shield, the Grail Knight is the death to foul creatures wherever he encounters them. On June 18th, we'll be able to see the Bretonian Knight in action as the Fat Shark team will be streaming a highlight regarding the Bretonian Grail Knight itself. Now this is rather exciting, especially for me, Bretonia is one of my favourite factions in the Warhammer Fantasy universe. A new type of playstyle is always cool, especially since there's no ranged combat whatsoever for the Bretonian Knight. However, I I feel like they kind of missed the mark here. Instead of creating a new career path for Marcus Kruber, why didn't they introduce a completely new character? This is where they could have shown off everything that Bretonia does have to offer. While the Empire and Bretonia can be considered quite similar, they do fight differently. So you could have had a character that starts off as say for example a Knight of the Realm and have some career paths moving towards a Questing Knight and a Grail Knight, maybe even some side stuff as a Men at Arms and a Battle Pilgrim. Obviously I'm aware that the game centers around the main five characters, but it would be interesting to see more characters being implemented into the game mainly because well they said that they want to support the game for many years to come which means that we're not likely to see a vermintide free for a long time if even maybe ever which is cool as long as they keep releasing new content but this might be the perfect time to introduce one or two new characters with dramatically different playstyles or just unique different features maybe even also focusing on the other different laws of magic for example imagine the possibility of the future with a few new interesting characters being implemented and your whole group being a complete group of spellcasters. There's loads of possibilities that they could implement into this game. If they wanted to go for something more unique, especially for Marcus Kruber, who is a member of the Empire, they could have used another knightly order. Say for example the Knights in Carmine. Yes, they might be Talian, but the knightly orders do work for the Empire. The Knights in Carmine are a knightly order, but instead of their normal style of combat, which would be sword and board, these ones fight with dual wielding blades. Or they could have done something radically different and implemented a warrior priest career instead. Honestly, I just feel like the Bretonian should have been its own character. Don't get me wrong, I'm excited to check it out and I will be playing it as soon as it launches, but yeah, you know, it just seems like it's a missed opportunity. But what do you guys think? Are you excited about the new Grail Knight? And what do you guys think about my thoughts regarding the Grail Knight having to be its own character instead of an extension of Marcus Kruber? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and let's start a bit of a discussion, shall we? But with that, my friends, we've come to the end of our video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, might I suggest giving the video a like or even subscribing to the channel as it really does help us out. 
In the description section below are various different links to social media platforms such as Facebook, Instagram and Discord where you can get in contact with a great book team. Also in the description section below is an affiliate link with Element Games where you can buy loads of hobby based products not just Warhammer for 10 to 25% off. Making a purchase using our special link and also using our special code, both of which are in the description below, supports the channel at no extra cost to you, which we think is rather cool. A big thank you to our patrons, your support means the world to us. Honestly, it's amazing that people want to help a small channel like us grow and get to a higher level of content. A special thank you to our patrons, Gibraltar LUSC and Ryan Birch for subscribing to us at our fame level. Honestly, you guys are super cool. And a big thank you to our patron, Edward Huell, for subscribing to us at our king level. Mate, you're super awesome. But with that, my friends, thank you so much for watching once again, and we shall see you all again very, very soon. Have a good day.